Hello, everyone, and welcome to Visualizing Tomorrow, the Like Has Come to Bim Revolution. My name is Juliana, and I work in marketing here at MicroCAD. And today's presenter is Luis, um, our expert in the matter subject. Um, in this session, we'll explore the future of BIM as, as we'll unveil Leica Scanner's transformative capabilities. And as usual, you can ask a question throughout the webinar at any given point on the left-hand corner. And you can ask Luis to revisit a step or ask any questions. And in the upper left-hand corner, you will find links to our social media, website, and YouTube channel. Um, also, we have the link for registration there for all of our webinars. So you can just click in there, register. And if you cannot make it, then you will get the on-demand recording anyway. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I'll pass it on to Luis. Hi, hello, uh, Juli, and hello, everyone. Uh, like uh, Juli said, my name is Luis. I I handle the um, uh, the scanning uh, part of the business for MicroCAD, uh, which means uh, anything that has to do with uh, Leica uh, scanners, uh, Leica technology, scan to beam, uh, modeling services, and technology. I'm very excited to be talking to you again. And um, I don't know if we have some repeats, but if uh, we don't, uh, well, hello everyone and uh, nice meeting you. If we have repeats, uh, hello again. <laughs> so let me just share my screen here real quick. And uh, I'm gonna do this, bear with me for a second. Okay, now share. Tell me, Juli, if, if uh, you can see the screen. Yep. You see it? Okay, perfect. Now let me put it on presentation mode. Bear with me for another two seconds. Is that all good? Yep. Okay. So, uh, like uh, Juli said, we're going to be talking about uh, scanning uh, technology, uh, scan to beam workflows, and a little bit about uh, what is it that has to do with Leica scanners. Okay, so as you probably know, uh, when we're talking about scan to beam workflow, the whole process is a little bit um, uh, complex or detailed, but it's really nothing uh, difficult. It's, it's, we, if we go from left to right, uh, whenever we need to scan uh, any existing conditions, any existing structure, we all you have to do is um, first analyze this, the, the project, uh, then we go into the field and, and capture the existing conditions with our laser scanners, okay? Then we uh, generate what is called point cloud uh, imagery or point cloud files. The scanners generate uh, a laser uh, uh, three-dimensional model of everything that is scanning around at 360 degrees around every time you set up a scanner in a different position. And that way uh, you can generate a, a unified uh, document, which is a complex, uh, it's a, it's a it's a large file, uh, which then you can export into any modeling application, name it Revit, uh, Navisworks, uh, Civil 3D, even AutoCAD, okay? And that's when you can start creating your model. After that is done, uh, obviously you you can go ahead and consume your data, whether Hello? you're gonna do a remodeling Hello? or whether you're going to do, um, hello? Uh, do, do we have a question from the audience? Okay, I thought I heard something. Um, and we're going to consume the data, use it for any any remodeling or any refurbishing purposes or, or new construction or whatever the case it is, okay? So in essence, basically what we're looking at here is a, 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 a visualization of a point cloud file after scanning a, an interior space, okay? So what you see there is a, 
three-dimensional representation of what it's called a point cloud of the space of your existing conditions. You can see the red dots are different setups or locations where you set up the scanner to create a different model. And the combination of those models at different locations, at different points, uh, is when you create uh, the three-dimensional model, okay? After that point, uh, this is a representation of an actual model done on Revit based off on that three-dimensional uh, file that you import from uh, on your on your Revit uh, application, okay? And, uh, and then you can even go further and create uh, more realistic representations of whatever you're creating. This is uh, an example of an indoors, um, you know, basketball court for a high school that was created uh, using uh, Enscape, uh, Revit and Enscape, okay? So the bleachers, as you can see on the bottom, uh, is a new construction that they wanted to do. So it's represented within the reality uh, uh, context. Okay, so a little bit about Leica and why we have uh, chosen Leica as our technology partner. Uh, there is many reasons, and uh, one of them is the quality, consistency, graphics, definition, and robustness of the equipment. Uh, Leica is a Swiss-made uh, uh, equipment. Uh, they're, they're a leading manufacturer in this uh, space. Their technology is really cutting edge. And, uh, you know, there's many other uh, scanners, uh, manufacturers, and many other brands that are good as well. Uh, we have just decided to work with the best. And uh, that means uh, fewer uh, workarounds, fewer uh, inconsistencies, higher definition. And uh, obviously, the equipment is also available for sale. We are a channel partner for Leica, so we sell the equipment. Uh, if you want to acquire, for any customer who wants to acquire uh, these scanners, we can uh, not only sell them the, the the hardware, the software, but we can also train anyone interested in acquiring. But but in in reality, this, this equipment, these pieces of equipment are fairly expensive and hard. Uh, to operate, you, you need a dedicated person who is knowledgeable. Uh, in the case of the drone, you need sometimes to get licenses uh, from the FAA to be able to fly the drone uh, in certain areas. There's a lot of restrictions, and, and you know, it's it's a little bit of a you know labor and knowledge intensive. So a lot of companies, a lot of our customers, uh, what as you probably know have decided to, instead of investing in, into this equipment and dedicating personnel to doing these scans, it's be, it sometimes it's much, uh, it, it's much better to just uh, get the service from, from the people who provide this. And so we also have the expertise in-house. We have these scanners and we can, uh, we can deploy them in a matter of days and we can create models based on the scans that we capture. The, like I said, uh, there are many reasons, technical reasons specifically, why we uh, decide to work with the Leica scanners. And, you know, basically what, uh, what translates into the field, into the deliverables uh, when, we when we have to do a scan and uh, when we have to model from a point cloud, it means less time, fewer questions, fewer time, wasted time on rework, and obviously better customer experience. But uh, in summary, what we're going to try to do is explain uh, in a little bit more detail how this uh, process works. And, uh, and it's very simple. We're gonna to try to simplify it for you guys. And obviously, if you have questions, uh, you, can, you can ask me any moment uh, or at the end, I believe, right? Um, so the phase one, basically, we have to sit down with the customer, understand what is it that they want to accomplish. So let's say you want to, uh, you have a, 
uh, a floor plan, uh, one, you know, an existing condition that you want to capture. You want, we sit down and, and we address, we assess exactly the need, the purpose of your project. What is it that you're going to do with the information? Uh, how much detail do you want the model to be created under? For example, you want to have the, the architectural drawings created from the scans on LOD 200. Okay, we need that information. Okay, what is, uh, do you need MEP systems? Uh, you know, in, in, as part of your existing conditions, represented properly in your uh, models. Okay, we need to do that. Uh, we need to have that conversation. Okay, so on. So once we understand the scope of the project, then we uh, go about uh, the locations. We go to the location with our scanners, and we deploy them. We capture uh, the existing conditions. Okay, uh, this is a graphic representation of a tunnel shaft uh, for uh, electric facility that we, that we did a few months ago. And um, so that's a, a graphics uh, representation of the point cloud in RGB mode. Okay, once we capture all the different scans, uh, then we have to uh, put them together what is called the registration in, in, and creation of a single uh, unified file so that it can then be transferred to a modeling and we go off to the last phase, which is creating the model, which is ultimately what much, most of the cases customers want. They don't need, uh, sometimes they don't want the point cloud, they want to have the point cloud and the, for, and the high resolution photography for references, obviously. But um, what they ultimately want is the uh, Revit or AutoCAD model so that they can start working on their uh, project, whatever that project might be, okay? So, uh, this takes time. Uh, it's somewhat of a manual work, uh, but it, 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 it's important to understand the needs and the scope of the project, as I said on, on, phase, on the phase one, which is very important to understand exactly what the customer wants so we can deliver on time and, and, under, and, and meeting expectations. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, uh, Peter. Peter, uh, are you there? I don't know if you can uh, share your screen. And um... I'm uh, I'm definitely there. I'm going okay. to just take I'm just going to take you uh, quickly through. Do you want me to? Process. Do you want to? Sorry, do you want me to stop sharing my screen? Uh, yes. Why don't I take you through the process? I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. And uh, let me just see, just a second. Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes, we yes, do. Yes, we do. Now on twenty four platform. Okay, Great. We well, we're going to talk about the process. What we're looking at is a plan view. And each of those oh, little we're, red. We're not looking at the plan view. We're seeing like your on twenty four, like the platform of the. Oh, well, that is not correct. So let me just do something else. <sighs> Sorry, Peter. I'm going to share the screen, and we are going to run this. When uh, we're going to run the entire screen. That's the one, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, do you see my my screen? Yeah, now we see it. Thank you. Excellent. Good. Well, let's uh, let's move things around. Right now, we're looking at a plan view of a condominium, and this condominium was uh, scanned using an RTC three hundred and sixty. And each of these red circles represents a place, a setup, if you will, for that RTC. If I click on any one of those setups. I can see the view that it uh, looks it is, sees. Let me see. Right now we're in the living room looking out, and I can navigate the whole thing from setup to setup. And basically, what I've done is uh, worked out a. Uh, here, here we are outside the uh, door. Let me see. Okay, here's another one. 
So we can actually, we have some very good photographs of everything that we've seen, but what's more important is from the setups, we created a point cloud. We used Register 360, which is a Leica product. And from that, we created a setup. But what's interesting is in Revit, any view we take all of a sudden becomes a Revit view. You notice that same view is this view in Revit. Now, let's just go. So here we are looking at Revit. There's a model involved. There's also the point cloud. The entire model was developed from the point cloud. Very quickly, I want to discuss the thing that we have called tools. There's, a, there's things called fitters. When I click on fitters, you see it will do pipes, flanges, steel, it'll connect steel, it does walls, ducts, doors, windows, columns. So I'm going to tell it I want to fit a wall. So what it's going to do, wherever I click, it will find a point cloud that makes a wall. So I click OK, and I'm just going to click right here. And it's going to ask me, what kind of a wall do I want? So if I know what it is, it may be a uh, two-hour uh, interior wall. Here's a, or a one-hour wall. I'm sorry to interrupt. I think we're only seeing a re the Revit 3 debut, but not the point cloud. That is, oh, thank you for telling me. That is really strange. Yeah. Let's just see what you see. That, yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. Let us stop and start the screen share. I want to see the entire screen. Maybe if you have two screens, just move everything to one. Yes, I, I know this is the right screen. So this is the right screen. And you should see, do you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, now we see it. OK, so basically, I clicked on the wall. And it says, OK, I see a wall here. What kind of wall do you want? So I chose a wall. Six and an eighth partition, two hour stud. OK. I say, OK. And the next thing you know, do you notice there's a wall here? It made this wall. This wall did not exist before. And that way, I went ahead and created the entire model. Now, using true space, I can easily go around the model and uh, choose whatever I'm doing. Let me just see where true space is. OK, this is true space. so. Again, we, we can walk around anywhere we want to, click on any view, look around, see that view from that corner, look back. But what's really neat is that this view has become a Revit view. So my true space view in Revit is this view here that I just created. This gives me the ability to create elements very easily from within the, the model. There we are. Anyway, that is the process. So the, what's nice is that once you have a point cloud, using Cloudworks, which is a Leica product, which is an in Revit, here's Cloudworks, I can, I can turn on the, 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 the model, I can turn off the model, I can view it. And I can actually, when I model these cabinets here, I model them in 3D just by seeing them in the point cloud and assembling the cabinets right there in space. So what I know is that I have a very good digital twin that's exactly working with the model. And that, that's an amazing thing to be able to do. So that, that was basically the workflow. The workflow is you, you go ahead, you scan it, you get it, you turn it into a point cloud, and then you bring that point cloud into Revit. And in, within Revit, we can uh, select elements like walls and doors and things, and it immediately creates them accurately right on the same place as the point cloud. 
and that saves a lot of time. So we can be very efficient in doing this. If you do a lot of this, you may just want to be able to have the uh, tool that allows you to take the point cloud that you created or someone else created and bring it into Revit and use it to create your own model as you wish. That can be done with piping and all sorts of other things. Well, Luis, I'll come back to you. I just wanted to give you a quick feeling about how easy it's work. Do you have any questions before I relinquish the screen? Um, we'll give it a minute for questions while we uh, go back, while we take it back to Luis, and then I'll let you know if, if I see any questions. Thank you, Peter. Uh, no, I mean it's it's uh, it's all good. Thank you, Peter. Um, uh, this is pretty much uh, what we wanted to share with you guys, and so uh, it's as you as you saw, it's it's a fairly um, uh, structured workflow. Uh, we, you just have to make sure that you follow certain uh, uh, process and you're aware of uh, what is what is it that you want to uh, capture and what what's the use of your uh, models, right? So. I don't know if uh, anybody has any questions, uh, but this uh, finishes our presentation section. Luis. And thank you very much. Luis. Yes. I would just like to add a little thing. We have a number of th things. Some of our clients who do a lot of modeling have ended up buying a scanner and you can get scanners at different price points. And what we've found very effective right. is uh, monitored them. So I've been able to uh, train and monitor our clients and in with a very few sessions get them very successful so by using all the like tools that are available they can be uh, very successful and do things at the, on their own time so i just wanted to indicate that's part of our services yes we can scan provide the model or we can uh, train you how to do it it all depends how many you do of course. Absolutely. That's part of the yes. microcat logic and what differentiates us. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Um, so, yeah, if you want to learn any of these topics in detail, you can always take a training with Peter or someone else on our team, although I think it's only Peter. Um, we also offer group classes online, so please be sure to be checking the MicroCAD website for future webinars. I think you have the link on the left hand, on the left hand side. And I wanted to thank again Louise and Peter for this wonderful presentation, and thank you to everyone for attending. Thank you very much, Julie. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.